Coming up on this episode of Up for Debate, we're talking The Last Jedi. That's right, Episode 8, Star Wars, our full review and wrap-up, coming up on this intergalactic episode of Up for Debate. This is Up for Debate, episode number 99, recorded January 4th, 2018, The Last Jedi. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this episode of Up for Debate, the podcast that can talk about anything and often does. I'm Sean Jennings, joined, as always, by a man four times cuter than the Porg. It is Matt Mariani. Oh, well, thank you for that uh, lovely introduction That's, there, Sean. It was very uh, kind. Your intro bit, I was, I was like perplexed at first when you said the year. 2018. That yeah, our first show. Yeah. Are you still, like, are you... Um, I don't know how often you, you get the chance to write the date out in your daily routine, but I have my I'm still writing month slash day slash seventeen. Yeah, I, like I have my, still... check, my checkbook right here. I do still write checks. Okay. Are you doing that? Do you find yourself doing that? Like you're putting seventeen instead of eighteen? Nope. I breezed right past it. I I, I no Good looking back. I'm having a hard time of it. Are you? Oh. Seventeen on everything, having to cross it out. Well, you know what? It's pretty easy to amend because you know you could just make the seven into an eight pretty easily. You just that's gotta, true. It does work this year. So that's that's been pretty good. Been using that to my advantage. But um, it'll probably take me a couple of days to adjust to this uh, twenty eighteen lifestyle. Does it feel that different? Future. From a new decade, uh, away from uh, time, it's going to be an odd year, right? We're in an even year we now. Are. We've been in an odd year all last year. Yeah. Boy, it was an odd year in more ways than one, oh. wasn't it? <laughs> oh, boy, was it. Uh, but 20th is going to be, Matt, we have the Winter Olympics coming up, which is very exciting. True. So we look forward That's to it. Cool. And I think we've got a great year here coming up on South Up for Debate. Korea. Yeah, I think so too. We've got a couple of ideas in the works and um, it's just like this olive. It's filled with uh, nothing but good things. Yes, Up for Debate, like a filled olive. We'll put that it's on a t-shirt. It's filled cheese. Mm. Yeah, see, I don't like that. That's bad. Um, but anyway, Matt, we are here today because we are talking about the new Star Wars film, Episode Eight: The Last Jedi. Um, I do want to remind everybody, we have talked about Star Wars on the show previously. If you're new to the show and want to get our thoughts on the original trilogy, you can go back to episode number 35, where uh, I watched them for the first time just last year, which was a lot of fun. And Matt and I discussed our feelings on both of those. And then we also did an episode just on The Force Awakens, which was, I don't have the episode number in front of me just yet, but you can go look on... It was a long, long time ago. In a galaxy far, far away. Yes, indeed. Thank you for setting me up for that. Um, and so we talked about those. I will say later this year, Matt, no joke, maybe when the new Han Solo movie comes out, we need to do an all prequels episode where we need to talk about the original the episodes one through three maybe throw rogue one in there <laughs> a little bit um i because i still i saw episode one i have not seen episodes two and three yet so um i feel like i'm in for some quality film um if you have a book that you'd like to read or a magazine you'd like to peruse and i highly recommend just bringing that with you although you made it through episode one Idiest of all three. Oh, and it was uh, garbage. Oh, it was bad. So the other ones are better, is what you're saying? Yeah, I, I don't know. I wasn't a big fan of two. People like two more than I don't know. I, it's hard to rank them because they're all. In, in, it's like ranking the circles of hell. It's like, <laughs> you know, it's a contest where nobody wins, John. Um, but yeah, um, we'll do that. We'll have to do that. Yeah, I think we Pretty should. Awesome. Sound good. Now, when it comes to tonight, I think a good way to do it, because I know a lot of people out there may not have seen the film yet. It is the number one film of 2017, but maybe not everyone's seen it yet. So I kind of want to keep the spoiler part for as late in the show as possible. Um, I okay. think that would probably be a smart idea. And so... Um, I think it's a good idea to forewarn everybody right now, even yes. though we, we will try to maintain 
the spoiler closure for later. Special spoiler warning out there, just in yes. case something comes up. It may happen. So you have been warned. Uh, there were a lot of twists and turns in this this uh, the Star Wars movie. There were. But before we get to Star Wars, Matt, I actually have a few like broader thoughts than The Last Jedi, if you don't mind. We do have an hour to fill, so I don't think we'll, we'll run short on time. But uh, Matt, uh, going to see this movie made me realize something. I okay. hate going to the movies. I don't like it. I am like anti going to the theater because it kind of sucks. Yeah. It's it's a, first of all it, it's a ten dollar matinee Matt. It was in the middle of the day on a Monday and it was ten dollars, which is crazy. I have a four K TV at home. I get the same damn experience, and you have to <laughs> go to the theater, and it's just not. There's just to me almost no advantage to doing it except for one, and the only reason I've realized I will keep going to the cinemas is to Three see popcorn. Is no, they haven't now, Matt. You can make it right on your stovetop or in your microwave. It's incredible. Gourmet popping corn. Unheard of. I, I know. This this brilliant Redenbacher man. No. I need to see Star Wars movies in the theater. And no other movies. And that is because Star Wars movies have such good sound that I cannot replicate at home. The picture I can replicate at home. I feel confident in that. My TV looks damn good. But I cannot get Star Wars sound in my living room. And that is what I'm going to have to suck it up in the future and go see Star Wars movies in the theaters. It's interesting that you mentioned that. Well, first of all, movies. Movie that I have seen case for movie theaters, at least to maintain that sound where you don't want to spend too much or go through too much effort replicating at home. Uh, this past summer's. Um, uh, Dunkirk. Dunkirk was an excellent sound movie. Ex tremendous. Matter of fact, like I, I feel bad almost for those of uh, those people that missed their chance to see it in theaters, and they're gonna have to see it for the first time at home because the sound absolutely made that movie, and it's and it's no no over exaggeration. Like the um, Christopher Nolan use, uses sound like no other has uh, on that movie um but i want to go back to your point about um disliking the movie theater it's a mixed bag for me i i it's a very much a love hate thing to me it's almost essential to going to see star wars movies in movie theater like there's no escape like there's never unless i'm like in in prison or in a foreign country or or in a, in a prison in a foreign country i don't um I don't ever anticipate missing a Star Wars release in theaters. I've seen every single one, even the original trilogy when it was re-released. The special edition was re-released in my local theater. I've seen movie uh, Star. Wars. Uh, I don't like seeing Star Wars movies in theaters, Sean. I'll tell you why. Oh. It's because of the kids, Sean. Yeah. The parents bring their children, and the children love Star Wars, and I get that. I mean, they should love Star Wars. It makes sense. The movies are basically for them. Um, well, now they're they're Disney, so they're for everyone. But um, kids kind of different ways. The, the talking, the crying, the constantly having to get up to go other places than sitting in the. Well, to be fair, I had some pretty well behaved children in my theater for this um, for this Last Jedi here, but. Uh, I, I I can just think back in the past of, of just terrible, terrible experiences involving well, watching Star Wars and children being in the theater. I, I can give you a good example because that happened to me at The Last Jedi where, and this is mini, mi this is like the, the lesser of spoilers, so like just hit the 30 second skip button. There's, there's a part of the movie, and this was the one thing, the one thing that got spoiled for me before I went in because it was all over Twitter. Um, there's a part of the movie where the sound drops out. For a few seconds. Yes. Cool moment. Cool filmmaking Great. tool. Cinematic moment. Yes. It really it was very neat. And honestly, I kind of wish I hadn't known it was coming, but whatever. Um, and people goddamn talked through it. Like it totally ruined the whole moment. Like, what is like what is what are you thinking? Like, 
that bugged me more than anything else. Because I'm sure people were talking through the whole movie. Just Star Wars is loud enough where it wasn't. I wasn't really noticing. And then and then they just kept talking through it, and I'm like, oh my god, don't do that. Yes, that's when you publicly shame them. It was very upsetting. Ridiculous. Yeah, nobody should be talking at any moment. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. So. Uh, that, but that moment was great. That um, you need their choices never that i deeply appreciated uh should we start the conversation there yeah i mean let's let's pivot into the movie and matt maybe maybe we want to start can. yeah I, well, let's let's overall you're uh, just give me your top okay. line overall two or three sentence review okay what did you think of star wars the last jedi Two or three sentence review. Uh, really good. Can't miss it. Or, or shouldn't miss it, rather. Um, would have changed a bunch of things. But still a, a really good. I, I, a very enjoyable. Action packed. And although we're getting on beyond three sentences, but John. Onra Vine. Anyways, I think it it sort of this is the movie that sort of breaks away from uh Star Wars and and maybe show it, shall we say, and, and really kind of become something else. Um still visible in tradition, but it's really kind of sprouting out. Um and I'll talk to, I'll, I'll we'll get yeah it we'll get more into that. I mean by that, but uh, I mean it's Star Wars. It's seeing it, so I I know people that hated it. Yeah, I know people that vehemently hated it. I know people that just disliked it. This is a divisive movie for many different reasons, and all of that as well. But um, what are your opinions? Yeah, I mean, I would say, look, I. I agree with your assessment that it was in many ways a different movie. And for me, what I liked most about the movie was the times it was different. One of the thing I think I really came to the conclusion of is I want less Star Wars in my Star Wars movies in terms of the mythos of Star Like what I like about the Star Wars movies is how they're shot, how they sound, how the characters act. That's what I like. I don't like the Star Wars mythos stuff. I don't like... Like, I, I loved the, some of the directing choices I thought were super strong in the movie. Um, and I'll get into that in a minute about some of the, the cinematography choices and the sound choices, which I thought were really great. I thought the acting in this movie was crazy. It was off the charts. I wish they had a better script to work with. Because I thought all of the actors, Daisy Ridley, Mark Hamill, um, Carrie Fisher, uh, the guy who plays Poe, whose name I can never remember... Uh, Adam Driver, who I went in expecting to be terrible because I did not think, I thought he was just okay in Force Awakens, blew me away in the movie. So the acting was strong. What really killed me was I thought the script was a little flat. I thought there were parts of the film that, like um, the the uh, casino planet bit, I thought they could have cut that whole thing. I didn't like it. I thought it really slowed the movie down. And I didn't, I loved, I wish the whole movie had been Ray and Luke Skywalker on the island. Because for me, that was the best stuff. Throw in Adam Driver. The casino, yeah. Yeah, the, the casino scene really just kind of seemed like they needed to give Finn something to do. But I would also was, argue... To do something. Well, let's we'll send him to this crazy casino place. And he meets a lockpick guy, and that plot really... Anywhere. But, um, but I would argue that's the exact same thing that happened when the Millennium Falcon landed on that asteroid and had to escape that worm. Like, it really had nothing to do with the movie. It was just, like, extra filler scene. That was just cool to have. Mm -hmm. now we, yeah, it's the same thing in that movie. It's like, well, Han and Leia and 3PO and, and uh, R2 and... Or not R2, he wasn't there. 3PO and, uh, and uh, Chewbacca. We got to give them... Something to do. So before they get to Cloud City, because we got to fill up some time, let's have them go through an asteroid field. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's Star Wars. It's part of Star Wars, too. Just because it's not relevant to the plot it doesn't mean it doesn't have to. It, it could. It's, 
this kind of like tech director showing off his skills, set designers showing off their skills. I mean, that's was, really what it was reasonably well. I mean, it was decently shot and, and reasonably well acted. I just felt like I wanted this to be a dramatic movie, like the dramatic moments in this movie for me were the best part. And that whole Casino Planet thing was came off as more humorous and more action, which I didn't necessarily like as like I wanted one of my favorite things about this movie. And this goes into the directing of Ryan Johnson is there were he he got that camera right in the actors faces. It was so tight. Uh, their face took up the whole screen, and you got to really see them emote and act and be characters. And I loved that. Like, that was... It, the dramatic parts of this movie worked so well that when we got to the lighter stuff, and the, like, you know, the little goblin alien that was put in the gold coins in BB-8, I was like, okay, like, I didn't I didn't really need that. Like, that didn't do anything for me. Yeah, that was more like a comic relief. That, that whole casino scene was basically... Well, and, like, the cheesy bit with the kids... And, you know, we're venturing into spoiler territory here, but I hate, I hated that they brought the kids back at the end. I'm like, just, just end on, on Adam Driver, just, just crushed and defeated at the end of the movie, setting up the next one in the, in the, the hideout where they've all escaped and all is lost for him and he blew it. Don't go to the cheesy bit with the kids and then the, he does like the force thing with the broom handle and I'm like, oh no, why are you doing that? Oh, Sean, this is the perfect chance, Sean, that I, I was going to save this for later. Oh, bring but it I up. I want to tell you, uh, this isn't too much of a spoiler, not going to give any really big uh, things away, but out of the theater, the first thing I did before I thought of anything else, um, I don't know why, but like, I don't know why my mind went there, but I rewrote that whole last scene in my head. Okay. Would you like to hear it? God, there's nothing I'd love to hear more. For me, okay. The kids are. It's the. It starts out the same. The kids in their room, talk, telling the story of Luke and Han in their silly space language. Can't decide whether or not I'd keep the silly space language. Maybe I would make it uh, English or whatever. Um, all right. The alien bursts in and says, "Back to work. Everybody's got to get back to work. Just sweeping and everything." Um, and the kid takes the broom. Now, there was much debate. Notice the controversy behind the taking of the broom. Did you happen to I, notice I, I what, heard this. What, it, what transpired there? Debate about it online. If you look closely, the way the kid takes the broom makes it look like they pick it up off, off the hand. No. uses the force yeah. to pull it. Yeah, which which was bullshit. That right out. That uh, he would have just grabbed the broom like a normal person. The force. That was something I was kind of pissed off about. Did not like that at all. Um, all right, so he takes the broom. He goes outside and he swings. Um, now in this part in the movie, guy and and like for a spaceship, you can't really tell. Pass him look. Like he's a Jedi, a new hope. What I would have changed, he he has the broom in his hand, but instead of showing, we use the we use sound because this movie. Uh, this is what he on his side. Yeah, Matt. Matt, like, Matt, like, we're 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 losing we're using we're losing you for a lot of this. So you're 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 breaking up. Hello. Yeah, hang on. I'll just jump back in. Yeah, go ahead. All right. So uh, the alien guy comes in back to work. The boy picks up the. Uh, broom, not using the force, just using his hands, goes outside. To this point in the movie, you see a uh, what looks like he looks up at the stars. Are you don't know? Now this part of the movie, wait, holding the lightsaber at his side. Yeah. Hello. 
Yeah, you're still there? Okay, yeah, I'm still here. I turned off my video to see if it would help because you were breaking up there. I'll do the same, I guess. So, at this point... Can you hear me? Yeah, no, you're great. Okay. Uh, the boy... Boom, at his side. And... Where he's just standing there. And he looks at the at the in the stars off into the distance. All of a sudden, he's he's like holding the broom out, but he's not sure what to do with it. And the camera cuts off, fades to black, and all you hear is a voice, and it goes. Like he's making like a lightsaber noise. Credits roll. Yeah. Yeah, that that's much better than <laughs> than what actually happened. <laughs> because I mean, I think that the audio part. Well, number one, has never made that sound before. Ends. Like, you know, like turning a stick into a lightsaber or turning their pencil into a lightsaber or whatever. Like, everybody has made that sound at some point in their life. Like, that that like little, like, psh, like lightsaber noise. Instantly connect with that. They'll eat that up. Yeah, but uh, um, well, I like it better. Boy, yeah. Making that noise, it's like you're putting yourself in that character. I thought that would have been a great, great way to end it. Yeah, but... Because it's like now everybody is on the side of the Jedi. But what I'm saying is, and I agree, that's much better than what actually happened. But again, and I guess I should go to my early point, which is I don't want this movie to be Empire Strikes Back. But at the same time, you gotta remember, Empire Strikes Back ends. Luke's had his hand cut off. He's learned Darth Vader is his father. It's a down, the movie ends on a down moment. A down. I wanted this movie and to this, do that. Well, see, my problem with the ending is that it tries to end on a down note, but it, but it really shouldn't be a down note because escape the resistance escapes the um the the enemy's defeated like um the the and the rebels have like a still have like this huge force it's not even like they were they, they didn't even have to really fight that much on the salt well, they said there was like 400 of them left yeah. and no one answered their help calls they're at the yeah. lowest point in the franchise no, yes. no well at a low point but we as the audience know like the, the new order is kind of in shambles right now kind of Not everything is really i mean yeah uh, i mean their big ship got blown up but they seem to be okay like i'm not buying that i'm buying that yes they escaped and they lived but it's a it's a down moment for the resistance because they are they said this is all that's left and there were like 12 people in the room so they're pretty screwed and Kylo Ren, whether or not you, he's obviously not the hero, but if you have any empathy for him at all, that's his lowest moment is at that point in the film. So I, I want these characters to end at that point. It, that's his lowest point. But I it seemed like it, it seemed like a little forced to try to, to try to like parlay with empire in that, in that set of that kind of tone. But, um, <laughs> I would say that I don't know. Well, before the like we talk more about that, can I just jump into my my problem with the resistance, Sean? Oh, bring it on. But I, I don't I'm not a fan. I don't know why they call them this this problem goes back to Force Awakens as well. Um Sean, what are they resisting against? Uh the First Order. Uh wh where did the First Order come from? Uh, they came from the Empire, right? Is the Empire still around? Is the Empire still a thing? No. So when the Empire fell, uh, who replaced the Empire? Uh, the First Order, I would assume. Why no, are you quizzing I mean, me like, on this? You know I don't know this. All right, the the Empire fell, Sean. The Rebels won at the end of Return. Should that now be the start of the New Republic? Or, or we could also, dare I say, use the new order. Oh my god, I'm so confused. 
Oh my god. I, but but this is, I hate exactly the mythology of Star Wars. I hate the mythology of Star Wars so much. Like, don't... I mean, that's not so much the mythology. That, sh that just is like... It, it makes sense. It's like... Because that's how they do in the books. If you read the Thrawn trilogy, which is supposed uh, yeah, to... Which I totally read. After great set of books that were written in the 90s, um, uh, the... The uh, the Thrawn trilogy picks up right immediately after Return when the New Republic is being built by uh, Senator Leia Organa. Mm. Um, now Leia Solo turned or Leia Organa Solo. Um, the New Republic replaced the Empire because the and the Rebels won. If the and, and now in this movie, never seemed to take control. They they beat the Empire and then like thirty years went by. And who was in control? The First Order? How did they let the First Order happen? Well, uh, but hang on. Isn't this, didn't Luke touch on this a little bit where he was talking about the Jedi and said they got too complacent? And I think they were referencing a little bit of, of the, the original set of prequels. Mm -hmm. I think that he was talking way back then. But maybe he was referencing that they just got too complacent and let it happen. Uh, there's too, there's too much of a gap. The name. I think the name should be reversed. I think that the the like Snoke and and uh, Kylo Ren and all them they should be the they should be the resistance because they're resisting. But they already won. It said right in oh. the opening crawl that they controlled like ninety percent of the galaxy. Like they've already basically won. So, but how? What? How the hell did they let that happen? Well, like, they got to make a bunch of movies to tell us how it right? happened. Those will be the prequels <laughs> for these sequels. The prequels oh no. Oh man. Yeah. Because, um, because I can't keep, the, you know, but that's what I'm like, just, I'm excited. Well, I, I like, want standalone movies. Like I'm so confused at all of the timelines and shit. In you know, watching movies. after watching this movie, I did appreciate Rogue One that much more. Cause it was kind of like, it was very easy to pay attention to, um, kind of followed, you know, like, it was within its own universe. It didn't rely on too much of um, an expanded knowledge of things. Um, well, except that it's based but, around the Death Star. But uh, by the way, we never talked about Rogue One. Did you like Rogue One? I did. Okay. I did like Rogue One a lot. Right. Um, I hated Rogue One. I, I like the things that it did. It experience. Away, it just it kind of smelled of way. It's kind of like just they remade. Um, but I like, but, but I like Rogue One because it told a unique story that we had never heard before. Yeah, that it already been told. So it was, it was good. Um, I like those kind of movies. I look forward to the Han Solo movie. Yeah, I hope it's good. I do. I, I, I. We'll have to do a full episode on Rogue One at some point. I, you know, I, I. I agree with you that I, I did appreciate and look forward to a more standalone Star Wars story. I just wish they had told it better because I didn't think I thought the movie was kind of boring, frankly. And I thought the characters were not the characters weren't very appealing. Like, I didn't think the acting was that stellar and they didn't no. make the characters that no. like I really you watch Blast Jedi. And even though Ray and Kylo Ren, you've no, it's not like Luke Skywalker, who we've known for decades. Like, they're somewhat new characters. Like, they, we've only seen them for now two movies. And I felt like so interested in them and their battles and what their you know their characters and their and all Kylo of this. Ren. Kylo Ren, man, he knocked it out of the park. Holy shit! And the writing, damn, that that guy looked amazing. And I'm not just talking about the scene where we get to see his pecs, his nipples. I'm talking yes. about great job from Kylo Ren. Yes, M Driver. I was I went in with bottom of the barrel expectations on his performance and he really blew me away. Um I thought I thought he was great. I also thought Mark Hamill. I also thought Mark Hamill did not that I expected him to do poorly, but he could have kind of rested on his laurels and just sort of like half assed it and gotten a paycheck. I thought he did a just a really excellent job. I, I honestly thought he 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 brought it. And not in like a cheesy way or you know, he uh, really he, evolved he the characters. Like he, he was having fun through this whole movie. Having a lot of fun. Like he, time he came on screen, it looked like he was acting his heart out. Like he had never left in in uh, in Jedi. Yeah. Great, great job the, for the, Mark Hamill. The, the scenes with him and um, Daisy Ridley as Ray, I thought were some of my favorites of the film. 
Um, I would say them two, and I lo- I loved the um, Kylo Ren uh, General Hux scenes also. I thought <laughs> yeah. they played off each other well as well, and so I like those two pair sort of going back and forth. Those were those were uh, good moments of levity there. Yeah. Now two of them going for power. Yeah. <laughs> excuse me. I will say, Matt, probably my least favorite thing in the whole film, General Snoke, well. mm-hmm. may be the wimpiest villain I've ever seen in a movie. I felt like I could have pushed him over. Like, he had no real personality, had barely anything to do with the plot, and was killed kind of easily. And I just didn't. I kind of wish I, Kylo Ren had just been the villain the whole movie. Like I, we didn't need no, it. Look, 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 like, to me, that was the point, right? Because brand new, the whole, the whole, the theme, the whole theme. They interviewed the director a long time ago, and they they asked him if you could define the theme of these new movies in like. A short, quick sentence. What would it be? The theme of the movies, he said, is new supplanting old. New, um, to me, that means new, not just new generations, but new ideas. We see that with the tree getting, not to get into too many spoilers. We see that with, with Snoke getting killed. You expect... When you see Snoke, this is the first like real glance we get of him in in real form. You expect him to be this terrifying. You expect him to be Palpatine, basically, em- the Emperor from uh, episodes four through six, but he's not. He's actually kind of lame, and in more ways than one, he's killed like like I mean, it's the climax of the movie, but. Damn, not see that coming. That I didn't know what where it was going to go. It did not see that happening. To and to kill off the the this is what, what I mean by new supplanting the old. To kill off what we view as the big bad halfway before the trilogy gets gets resolved, like halfway through the trilogy, and having the new Kylo Ren kind of take that role. Totally like divergent Star Wars. We definitely haven't seen before from these movies. Uh, well, you know, I agree. I agree with your point. I think I, I do call a little baloney though, because it's kind of easy for the director to come out and say that it was his plan all along. But you go and watch Force Awakens, and they do, you know, they project his head real big, and, that you know, oh, he's the big scary. And then just to your point earlier in the show, it's like, how did they conquer the whole galaxy again? And you're like, but with this guy? Like, really? Like, I'm not, I'm not buying it. And it just kind of really disappointed me that, you know, I, and again, I know this sounds like I'm, I'm talking up myself a little bit here, but uh, I knew this was going to happen half you know part of the way through i i I knew that snoke was gonna die and and kylo ren was gonna supplant him because you couldn't have kylo ren turn good uh and then have another movie what and then they team up as good guys no he had to be bad through the next movie and i i just i it didn't surprise me at all when that happened and so i think to bring him in just as an excuse to then have kylo ren kill him to prove that he is the ultimate bad guy i just felt to me a little light like, if you're going to do that, then at least, at least make it seem like Snoke is, like, hard to kill. Like, he didn't even seem that hard to kill. Like, it, it was just... I, I don't I don't know. He barely moved. He sat in his damn chair the whole time. Like, it, I don't know. I just I just thought it was so cheap, and I was like... I I, I didn't need it. I, it. It very much surprised me. Just, just, you know what? After Force Awakens, I was kind of... Like, my expectations were so low for this movie. I thought it was going to be a rehash of Empire. So just to see them do new things, no matter what they were, excited me as a fan. But but I think yeah. that, for me, that was one of the realizations I came to. 
part of my sort of summary feeling on this movie is that when it comes to Star Wars films, uh, they can rehash old the films, the old films all they want or make new ones. I don't care because what I like about Star Wars movies is the experience and the acting. That's what I like about these movies. I don't care about the story. I don't really care what happens to the characters. I care about feeling good while watching it, having things exploding and cool sounds happening, and having uh, strong actors that make compelling feelings about characters. But, like, I don't... Kylo Ren can be good. He can be bad. I, I don't really feel an opinion one way or the other. I'm just interested in where the story goes, you know? I And that's I know that's a unique thing to me. I know most people don't feel that way about movies, but... When it comes to Star Wars as a whole, there's just, for me, too much myth- mythology, too much history with these characters that I don't really care anymore. I just don't care. Like, I don't care what happens in the Han Solo movie, as long as it's cool to watch, cool to listen to, the acting is strong, it's shot kind of cool, and it's just a fun thing to watch. That's all I care about. I don't really care what happens in the movie. Star Wars is... The fans of Star Wars... Suffice to say, and I'm and I lump myself in there right with them. Of course, I've read tons of the expanded universe books, more than I can count. Uh, you know, I I've I've been on uh, Wikipedia, so like the special Wikipedia just for Star Wars. Can't tell you how many hours of my life I've spent in that black hole, in that Sarlacc pit, shall we say? Um, these movies are for nerds, and when you make a movie for nerds love the expanded universe nerds nerds love the history of the creatures just kind of getting getting absorbed into that world when you the the double-edged sword of course like of course you're going to have a, a a loyal fan base is good you're, you're also going to have tons of disappointment when you don't Like that expanded universe of reverence, attention, you're going to have people that are upset. And I think that's what happened with this movie, particularly with the backstory of some characters, especially um, uh, Snoke. And there was a much disappointment um, from the fan base that they didn't delve more into his backstory because the, the he was, let's face it, when, when after Force Awakens, He was the, of all of that nerd uh, attention. Nerds went on the internet. They took to the forums the day that movie came out to talk about this new character, Snoke. Who he was, where he came from, story to Rey in some way. Is he connected to Kylo Ren in some way? Is he Obi-Wan's ghost? Is he one of the... Young, trust why he has a resentment toward the Jedi Order. Palpatine's ghost is he Palpatine's master? Is he actually Princess Leia? Is he Jar Jar Binks? There were <laughs> fun. I kid you not. Is he Harry fans, Potter? We uh, don't know. They wanted to figure this guy out, and they didn't get that when his life was cut short suddenly and abruptly in the middle. For, for doing that. Because doing that, they isolated men. And I don't mean isolate because it, no matter what, this is Star Wars after all. But they they took a chance on this. And and they 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 that was the moment for me that the whole thing went up in smoke. Not necessarily the part where Yoda lights the tree on fire. That might be symbolically things going up in smoke. And in a way that scene is kind of foreshadowing, you know? order just getting completely um lit a flame uh is kind of foreshadowed in the burning of the tree and everything just kind of gets thrown into chaos although um but he's kind of more cool and calm but when when snoke dies that's the moment where you're like it goes off the rails and you're like for from here i don't know um but that was just one of many different 
twists and turns that this movie are we have we reached spoiler uh i spoiler territory yes. oh we most certainly i think we reached it like 10 minutes into the to the record so yes no i think we did okay Let's jump down the spoiler hole then. Which, oh, uh, I, I think I know what you're talking about. Are you talking about the return of a favorite classic character? Uh, yes. Oh, that's right. Admiral Akbar is back. Hey, what they did was a damn shame. But you know what? I'm I'm kind of okay with it. Uh, he dies in a in a kind of a for those of you that uh haven't watched movie you probably shouldn't be listening to this but so akbar dies in a kind of a they kind of like like just mention it leia leia get got shot out of that window oh and by the way admiral akbar's dead like yeah. nonchalant kind of side note the internet was pretty pissed about that too that 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 strikes me as one of those things where like while shooting the actor like got into a fight with the director and they're like, cause it's the same guy who's played him in all the movies. And it's like, mm -hmm. I'm not doing this guy yet. I'm done. I quit. And then he like throws off the costume. So they had to like suck him out into space. Well, actually you're half right, Sean. Hmm. Uh, the died while they were filming. Okay. They did it. Well, there you go. Uh, yeah, no, unfortunately that very sad. Yeah. The actor, oh. I forgot his name. Admiral Akbar in Return of the Jedi died while filming, so they just kind of they were like, "Oh, I guess we can't bring Akbar back." Wrote him off. I a lot of fans were, were very miffed about that, but then again, I mean, he was a he was basically an internet meme. Yeah, we had had enough. I think. Although I, um, I will say because I do want to circle back to the point you were getting to, but I do want to very briefly just because we're talking about this scene, the Princess Leia getting sucked out of the spaceship and using the Force to get back into it was bullshit and really bugged the hell out of me. Like, don't do that. Like, either, <laughs> I either, like, don't just... I didn't see the point. No, and it was just, but it was weird, because it's like, now you're making up new superpowers for the Force, because it's like, it's one thing to, like, I get that you can pull shit with your mind. Okay, I get that. It doesn't save you from the cold vacuum of space. Like, she just woke well, up after being frozen to death with a lack of oxygen. You open up a new can of worms. It's like, well, why? Well, then why do Jedi need spaceships at all? That, that, Can't they just fly through the space? That, like, that's what. Oh my god, that was weird. All right. So full disclosure, I actually went to the bathroom immediately after Leia got jettisoned out the window <laughs> because I I thought, okay, I thought that the next couple of uh, like the next scene was gonna be like a dry scene or expected to be that exciting because they they just had like a crazy dramatic moment with leia so i went to the bathroom immediately and then i came back and and um my friend who i was seeing the movie with just like leaned in and was like yeah leia's alive she used the force to get back in a spaceship and i like i didn't believe him at first and then i saw her in the medical pod and i was like oh well I guess that happened. i, I kind of wish you hadn't oh, been told gosh. that and then later in the movie we're like holy shit she's alive that would, been, that would have been great <laughs> this is bizarre i mean i don't even like why even have that at all like why no. even have that moment i mean the only reason i could think of well two reasons one is because we had kylo who was supposed to shoot the ship with his mother and it hesitated and then the tie fighters do it but you don't have to have her actually get like the TIE Fighters could have just shot at the bridge and she just didn't get sucked out into space. Escaped. You know, it's exactly. like that wasn't necessary. And then the other thing is like to have her dramatically come back. But again, she could have just gotten shot and not sucked into space. So, yeah, I, I thought that was yeah a totally unnecessary part. Um, But Admiral, Ak see, they could have made more time for a little Akbar memorial. They could have had his little picture in a frame with candles around it. His his grieving wife could have been there. Yes, dotting her eyes with a tissue or something like that. Yeah, I would have liked that. Um, the, the silly flying through force moment, and, uh, fl and, flying through space with the force. Yeah, moment. It was very weird. Anyway, Matt, what what was the point you were actually trying to get at? No, so um, the uh, pretty much Luke's entire arc in this movie, I loved up until the very end. Up until the very end, um. I, I really liked how he was e extremely resistant. Beyond hesitant. This guy, like, and, and I think a lot of that to Mark Hamill's 
acting ability. Um, Cause I think they, they basically wrote him as a, you know, kind of like a, a like a, like a combination of Obi-Wan and maybe a little bit of Han thrown in there. Very like, like a uh, reluctant kind of person, kind of like just looking out for themselves and, and just kind of living day to day um, this, this hermit lifestyle. But um, with, with, with Luke and, and it was, a, it was like an internal problem that he had with the Jedi order with coming to terms with what he did coming to terms with, with what he allowed to happen uh the struggle that he made and of course yoda yoda's very special cameo moment which was a complete surprise and and a, and a welcome one at that so as soon as i saw those ears and i think everybody in the audience kind of had the same gut reaction like back like hey did not expect it um but i mean then he then he finally gets to training her and they have the moment where she reaches out to Kylo and the force and he doesn't want to train her anymore. And, and then he, he gets to play the role of Achilles in the tent a little bit where he at the end and saves the day. But Sean, why did he have to die? That's a good question, Matt. <clears throat> that, Why that, did he, a, that, that didn't have to happen that, that that that's what i mean by that last moment like they couldn't have wrote that in some other way i don't know um that not just because you know it's sad it felt like uh, ashing of obi-wan like i was right back to, to the end copy I was like, they were trying so many new things and it was so unique, but then that like blind sacrifice happened, had to happen. And they, they trick you because, because he throw he hits him with the lightsaber and it goes right through him and nothing happens. And then he stabs him with the lightsaber and nothing happens. Like they, they flash back to the, to him on his little rock Island and he's dead. And it's like, he was a force ghost. Which but actually, why? which, which I, by the way, I was a complete yeah, sucker for, and I fell for it. Because I assumed he was using some other bullshit Jedi nonsense to survive getting shot at and all this stuff, and, and to defeat him. Uh, and I never put the pieces together he was on the island. So I, I take responsibility. I totally fell for that. See, I, I kind of... I mean, it, it makes perfect sense. I should have figured it out. This, the, the smoke cleared and he was still there i thought that something was up mm. and i started to question everything about him i was like his hair is shorter he trimmed his beard those he was wearing before his lightsaber is a different color like, like all these things kind of like fermenting in like the back of, fermenting in like the back of my mind and i was like here something there's being pulled but I did, why in that case why didn't he just show up and and so he could solve for, why did he need to project himself as a ghost Matt to answer your question why did Luke Skywalker have to die in this film I think there's a very simple answer for that and I think it's the same reason why in this summer's uh, Avengers colon Infinity War uh, I have a sneaking suspicion you'll see the end of one or more Avengers. These film franchises have been around for a long time, and you, you can't keep the same characters in these film franchises forever. And I think this film, more than any of the other Star Wars film, really highlighted the acting strength of Adam Driver and Daisy Ridley, and to a lesser extent, but still fair enough, John Boyega, Kelly Marie Tran, uh, Oscar Isaac... Um, et cetera. Uh, the guy who played General Hux, whose name I can't remember. Uh, God, he was such a treat. I, I think that the film really showed that it, as much as we love these characters, the film can go on without them, and eventually you do have to retire them. Now, do characters have to die? No, not necessarily. And, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see what they do with Carrie Fisher, obviously, um, in, in the next film. But, I just think that it's good for these films to eventually retire these characters. You have to. They can't be around... 
forever if you continue to if you intend to continue to make movies in the same timeline in the same universe. Like if it's completely unrelated, that's fine. But if they're gonna if they're gonna make a ninth movie in the series, you kind of have to start retiring these characters. I thought this movie, as you mentioned, Mark Hamill's uh, Luke Skywalker's journey in this film, I thought was done so well, both acting wise for Mark Hamill and writing wise by Ryan Johnson that and shot as well um, that I didn't mind him getting sent off in the end of the movie. I I, I felt I was bummed because I love Mark Hamill and of course I'd love to see more of him. Um, but I didn't really feel that bad about it because I felt he, he did what he needed to do in the movie. And for all the mistakes he made, obviously earlier in life, but even earlier in the movie with, with Kylo Ren and all this, I felt that he got some amount of redemption for what he did. He did the right thing in the end. Um, and I just thought it was, it was very touching actually. I, I really, I really, I wouldn't say I love that part of the movie, but it, it was a part of the movie I really valued and, and I don't, I would, I wouldn't change it. I don't think. Yeah, I, I I see what you mean with the the and again it comes back to the theme the old or the, yeah. the old being supplanted by the new. I just don't know if. First of all, I don't think we're going to be. I don't think this. For in the next movie, because you know now he's one with the force. He's basically the same. He's gone the way of. Obi Wan and Yoda, and we we've, we've seen both of them again lots. Yeah, you're right. Almost like they never even died. So I think that he will be there as a as a guide for for uh, Ray in her from endeavors. What they're going to do with Leia, though, that's very interesting to me. I was very much anticipating, not like look, not re- not with relish, not looking forward to it, but I was I was ready for her character to die in this movie, and when she didn't me that that was like because this would well, have been the perfect time for something to happen so if i understand um, if if what i've read is correct um she actually shot some stuff for episode nine so um because she she died well after the wrap on this film so um i yeah. my expectation is she will be in some of nine now what they actually do with her based on what they shot and what the story requires who knows but she will be in it for for some amount mm-hmm uh, yeah, the, I know they they had already filmed some some scenes. We'll have to see what they decide to do. Um, oh, a quick little fun fact, Sean. Ooh. Before I forget, I wrote this down to specifically share with you. Just a, just an interesting tidbit. His a lightsaber does not come with another lightsaber. Uh, can you say that again? The first moment in Star Wars franchise where where a lightsaber does not come into contact with another lightsaber was in this movie. The first time that, that a lightsaber uh-huh. did not touch another lightsaber. That is a in, good in, in all of Star Wars. Huh. Yep. That's it neat. doesn't happen. And some people are speculating that it, it plays into, and I, I don't know if I really buy into this, but they're speculating that it, um, other of the major themes, which is the, they kind of are starting to throw out of good versus e- concrete forms. I mean, you know, you see that perfectly. Like Kylo Ren embodies that. Sure. He's like, there is no Sith. There is no New Order. There is no Resistance. There is only us. Like, basically, like a true nihilist. Like he wants to reset the clock back to, back to zero. And and kind of start everything anew. It kind of speculate because there's no like, there's no, Google. there's like ideas of i guess the the what's the, the lockpick thief guy kind of says something to the same effect like he's like there's no like who are the good guys who are the bad guys like i guess the guy that that owned this ship sold to the good and the bad like ambiguity kind of like middle gray area um 
I don't know. What are your thoughts about that, Sean? What are your thoughts about the uh, the divergent? Because the old the old trilogy was very much about you know the light side of the force and the dark side of the force and bringing balance and yeah. I again, that's not that's not what I enjoy about these movies. It's really I, again, I like the personal character development of the stories. I'm not a big fan of which is why I'm so excited for episodes two and three. But um, I don't like the kind of like government sort of philosophical theories that go behind these movies. That's just not something I just ignore it. And I don't really, I was more interested in the personal sort of development of Kylo Ren coming to grips with how he deals with the people around him and who he can trust and who he can believe in someone who's been burned in the past. Um, he's come to put a lot of faith in, in Snoke um, which he's quickly learning may have been misplaced, but at the same time, can he truly trust Ray, who seems to have his best interests in mind, but that's he's been burned before with Mark Hamill, uh, obviously Luke Skywalker. That was what I really saw appealing, and then Ray obviously dealing with the very emotional side of figuring out who her parents were, and, and Kylo Ren understanding as someone who abandoned slash killed uh, his parents. Uh, or at minimum tried to. So I think for me, that was what I was more interested in. I, I just, that part doesn't do it for me. So I got to be honest. Uh, now, Matt, uh, we're running short on time. So, uh, you know, this would be a good time for us to wrap up any sort of uh, lingering threads. I do want to mention a couple quick points. One, Snoke's uh, all red samurai style stormtroopers were super badass and probably my favorite new character of the movie. Yeah, but they they were just I don't know. You remember the the Imperial Guards from Return of the Jedi? Uh, which ones were they? I think they may have been an Empire also. They were that was they were the same character. Were they? They had, they had like the all red robes and the double sided lightsaber. Yeah, oh, I don't I don't remember that. But anyway, those they were cool. I don't remember if they had double sided light. They might have just had like shocker. Oh, but they had all, they had like eight different weird wacky weapons, which was, you know, because they had like the the like a, kind of like a very that uniform. Yeah, it was thing. neat. Um, um I'll also, I hope that uh, yeah. another thing I want to mention: the future of Star Wars is bright. Job of the Hut spinoff movie because I would totally be all about that. <laughs> oh God, no! Mm-hmm. Oh God, no! I want I want to see the origins of Job of the Hut. I can ass- I want to see the origins of the guy who played Job of the Hut in the original version before it was supposed to be a worm guy. Did you know about this coat guy? Yeah, yeah, Coke guy. I want to, I want to, I want to hear his it story. Was originally supposed to be Java. Yeah. Before they decided to make him like a creepy slug monster. Yes, exactly. I want to hear his story. Yeah. Um. But yeah, no, they can put put this way, Matt. There is no shortage of characters that they can do prequels and spinoffs for in this universe. Um. I also quickly did want to mention Benicio del Toro as DJ, who was the code breaker they picked up on Casino uh, Planet. Uh, I thought was just the most lackluster Benicio Del Toro I've ever seen. Um, A man man who came in to collect a paycheck and then left. (laughs) Giving it his 10% effort. Um, And I thought, yeah. Damn, was that a missed opportunity if they didn't try to get Billy D. Williams? Yeah. And that was the, the like perfect, perfect time to reintroduce him. Yeah. Yeah, no, the the charisma level was was shockingly low. Uh, I guess it's not about bringing old characters back. They kind of did that in Force Awakens and they're trying to move away from that. Yeah. I guess. I I'd also say Kelly Marie Tran as Rose Finn's love interest in the movie did a fine job, but I just didn't their whole love story throughout the movie, I really could have just done without. It, it kind of reminded me of Spider-Man 3, where they had just one villain too many. I felt like this movie, you know, really focus on on everyone else. I, I just didn't, I didn't, I didn't dislike it, but I didn't really need it. It didn't add a lot for me in the film. Sure. Um, um, it's hard. It's hard to... Star Wars movie. It's hard to make a Star Wars movie. Damn. Like, how do you, how really, how do you keep all those dishes spinning? Like, how do you keep all those balls in the air? Well, like, 
Think about it this way, Matt. Ryan Johnson, who both wrote and directed the film, do you know his other films? Ryan Johnson. What else did he make? Yeah, well, that's the point. Nothing, really. He's made one other major feature film. He's the guy who did Looper. With uh, with Bruce Willis and uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Hmm. And that's it. That's it. I mean, that was a pretty good film. Oh, I no, it was, it was a good film. I enjoyed the film. It was weird. It was trippy. You can see the sort of similarities between them. Yeah. Uh, but this is a dude with, like, no real experience. Mm -hmm. And he made it. The, one of the biggest movies of all time. So I, I will give him credit. It wasn't a perfect movie by any stretch, but it was a damn fine movie. And I think most of the sort of negative. Like how do you? I mean, yeah. It's like, yeah. Everybody has. No, mo it's, it's most of the negative reviews I've seen are people just being real nitpicky about it. And, and, and again, yeah. you're, people are entitled to their opinions. If they don't, you know, if they want to not like it, more power to them. But, you know, I think... On its worst day, you could call this an average film. I don't think there's really much in here you could say is genuinely, truly bad. Um, you may not like all of it. You know, you may want to do things differently. But I don't think there was anything that was fundamentally bad in this movie. Definitely not. Definitely not. It was not the prequels, that's for sure. No, so. <laughs> it, no it was it was a generally solid movie. And, and I appreciated that it was different from The Force Awakens. Uh, especially, uh, I love Star Wars movies for, and I mentioned this many times, but the cinematography and the visuals, like when the sound goes, like when she takes the ship and plows it through the other ship and it goes, so, like that was really cool. And and a lot of explode, like the opening scene where they're bombing uh, and the ships are, everything's exploding. Like that was cool. Like I was, I was all about that. That was great. Um, and like I said, the tight shots on the characters' faces where just the whole screen was their face and you could see every emotion, every tear, every bead of sweat, ev every facial tick, you saw it in full color right in front of your face. I loved that. I love that because that really brought the story to life in a way that, and, and I just compare the Marvel movies so much because they're both the biggest movies going on right now, but Marvel would never do that. Every Marvel scenes, the character is like, you know, a small piece of the frame, and there's a bunch of other crazy shit happening. This movie, it stopped everything just to look at the characters and what they were doing and what they were saying. And I really appreciated that they took the time in a giant Hollywood blockbuster film to do that. Sure. And also stuff exploded. <laughs> stuff exploding is always fun. Yes. Um, super. All right. Well, I think that's a, a pretty good pretty good wrap up we, we both agree it was a pretty good film we enjoyed it sure but Be better or worse than force awakens better okay. definitely better uh and in terms of story more surprises more trying new things but further away from the source material and i like that Went, it went different places because I, I I mean Force Awakens very much is like you could have Force Awakens on one TV and on the and the, you know on, be watching watching a New Hope on your laptop and at some po points you might think that you're watching the same movie it's like like fast forward a couple of years whatever uh, this movie was unique I mean there were there were some throwbacks for sure there were some callbacks to Empire. But it was not like for scene. But uh, yeah, this was good. And and we saw Kylo Ren, his evolution from like teen to like, you know, a guy that's still really angry, but now he's going to do something about it. Like, yeah. And like you said, Adam Driver knocked it out of the park with the acting. The acting as, on a whole was just better this movie this time around. I need to say, I think maybe it was because there was less Finn. I, I don't know. I, I just, I'm not really interested in Finn as a, as a character. He, he provides a great deal of comic relief, but as, as a character, he doesn't really do much for me. Like he's. Well, but that's what I think is strong. Like a, I, I think like that's a, like a throwaway. I think that's what's I don't know. strong in these movies is, is, is the, it works well when the characters are evolving. And I think in Force Awakens, I actually think Finn somewhat did that, and I thought those were the moments where he shined. In this movie, he had nothing to do. 
Like, he did not need to be in this movie. He could have just stayed home and not been in it, and we wouldn't have noticed. They could have jettisoned him out into space instead of Princess Leia. Totally. They've been sleeping in the the medical bay the whole time and then woke up. But, you know, but but then we see that... Because he really didn't really go anywhere. I'll I'll even give a shout-out to Oscar Isaac uh, playing Poe Dameron, who I thought was really good in this movie because he had stuff to do. Like, his character did evolve over the movie, and we see him, you know, do everything right, and then he kind of gets his comeuppance a little bit and then has a bit of redemption at the end. And it's like, okay, that's stuff to do. Ray, um, Daisy Ridley was awesome. She was great because she had stuff to do. Her character changed and evolved. She became stronger as the film went on as a more independent person. I'm just saying that is what's strong about this movie more so, especially than Force Awakens. Um, I I will say comparing the two movies, I think Force Awakens was more consistently good in my mind. Like the whole movie was really good. This movie, I thought like the best moments were amazing. Better than, way better than Force Awakens. I also felt this one had more not as good moments as Force Awakens. That was kind of it was more of an up and down than Force Awakens was, and I think that's okay. I, I don't, I'm not too beat up about that. But um, I would change more about Last Jedi than I would about Force Awakens. I, I would say that. Um, but they don't let me direct Hollywood blockbusters anymore, so. <sighs> Not a good plan. All right. Well, Matt, we are uh, vastly over time. I hope everyone enjoyed uh, listening to this conversation as much as uh, we had doing it. Uh, I recommend everybody go back and listen to our past Star Wars episodes and keep an ear out. Maybe we'll do more in the future. Uh, I also want to tease next week will be our big 100th episode, which is quite a spectacular accomplishment. I'm very excited. I know you are, Matt, as well. Uh, We'll have another great episode, as we do every week here on the show. Um, So you're going to want to check that out. Of course, our website, upfordebate.tv, has all the past episodes. You can check them out there. Uh, And you can also... Keep up to date on our Winter Movie League at upfordebate.tv slash movies, uh, which is updated every week with the latest scores there. Um, at TV is ours on Twitter, and TV at gmail.com is our contact email. Uh, but we are going to wrap it up here. So uh, on behalf of Matt and myself, this has been Up for Debate. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. We'll see you next time for more great discussion here on the show.